and welcome to the Josh and Ashley Show. What a great program we have lined up today. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a great one. How you been, honey? You been doing good? I'm doing good. That's wonderful. I hope all of you watching are doing well. Uh, and you know, we've uh, we've had a lot going on here. It's been a, a busy summer. Summer now has just about come to a close. And, and uh, now fall is in the air. And, and uh, back to school, all the kids. I'm are, in first grade this year. You're in first grade? I am. How are you in first grade? I'm the teacher to our first grader. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Our daughter, Priscilla, uh, is in first grade now. And, of course, Eli, he's uh, three years old, and he's, he'll be four soon. And So life is good. And, uh, and getting better. And getting better. So how's school been? Are you learning anything? Uh, anything good? Not much. Not much. Okay. <laughs> well, it, are you teaching anything? That's what I, I want to know. I think I'm doing all right. Oh, okay. Well, anyhow, we're certainly glad to be with you today, and we're going to have a, a wonderful time today. We've got a special guest with us who's going to be joining us in just a few minutes, and boy, we're excited that he's on the Josh and Ashley show today, but I tell you what, uh, while we're here, you know, we love to sing, so we might as well sing today and to see what happens. I like this song, one of my favorite songs. Songs, uh, that we've ever sang. It's not a new song. It's an old song, but you know us. We like these old songs, and so why don't we sing it today? You know, maybe today uh, you're watching the program. Maybe you've just joined us wherever you may be, wherever you may have come from today. I want you to know that Jesus loves you, and he cares for you, and whatever storm may be raging in your life, this song speaks of that. It tells one of the most precious stories in the Word of God of how the storms were raging. And Peter asked the Lord to say, "If Lord, if it's you out there on that sea, let me come to you. And that's exactly what happened. You know the story. Let's sing the song, all right? When the waves seem over our head, they're under the precious feet of Jesus. Amen? Listen to this story. When Simon Peter walked abreast, putting his faith unto the test, he said, Master, will thou bid me come unto thee? Jesus said, Come, so Peter went. And when the faith he had was spent, Peter sang low, but Jesus had ways on under his feet. Under his feet. Under his feet. Under his, under his feet. There's not a problem that you'll face. He cannot meet. Whenever you've waded out too far in waters too deep, remember when waves are over your head, they're under his feet. Often we faint in trial sore, can face our problems anymore, forgetting up and praise the Lord. He walks the water and the shore. The heavenly breeze and the thundering seas are under his feet. Under his feet. Under his feet. Under his feet. Under his, under his feet. There's not a problem that you'll face. He cannot meet. Whenever you wait far in waters to deep. Remember when waves are over your head, they're under his feet. They're under his feet. Under his feet. Under his feet. Under his, under his feet. There's not a problem that you'll face that he cannot meet. Whenever you wait it out too far in waters to Remember when waves are over your head, they're under his feet. Yes, they are. <laughs> Woo, what a great song. 
I'm telling you, when you know where the Lord's brought you from and what he's done for you, you know, it's just not hard to praise the Lord. That's exactly you right. See where you've been and where you've come from now. It's not hard to lift your hand. It's not hard to say praise the Lord or hallelujah. It's not hard to clap your hands. It's not hard to rejoice when you think back at what Jesus Christ has done for you. I'm telling you, it's not hard for me to praise him today. It's easy because I love him because he loved me first. Listen to this. We used to go to church, feel the spirit of the Lord. Our needs of men went on his name we called. And in his house we'd worship in one mind in one accord. Oh, how the blessings would fall on. But how it seemed to heart at times to get this soul world off our minds. Even little hills seem so tall. But my mind goes back to Calvary, where the Savior died for me. It's not so hard to praise Him after all. It's not so hard to praise Him when I think of all He's done. How He gave His life for all mankind, where He brought me from. When I think of all His suffering, my trouble seems so small. It's not so hard to praise Him after all. The blessings as the Lord would pour them out. Our songs of praise would seem to be so strong. Oh, but then some brother would testify. It'd make you want to shout of how we'd been with Jesus all day long. And the singing of the choir seemed to usher in the fire. Why you could feel the spirit wall to wall. Oh, the strength that I acquired. Oh, I came so tired. It wasn't hard to praise him after all. It's not so hard to praise him when I think of all he's done. How he gave his love for all mankind, where he brought me from. And when I think of all his suffering, my trouble seems so small. It's not so hard to praise him after all. It's not so hard to praise him when I think of all he's done. How he gave his life for all mankind, where he brought me from. When I think of all his suffering, my trouble seems so small. It's not so hard to praise him after all. When I think of all his suffering, my trouble seems so small. It's not so hard to praise him after We'll be back in just a moment. And welcome back to the Josh and Ashley Show. We have a special guest with us today, and we're certainly delighted to have him here on the program. One of our and, favorites. Uh, oh, he's been a friend for many years now, and of course, uh, he really is no stranger uh, to this network. He's been here several times, but he's never been on the Josh and Ashley Show. Oh, well, he's and, moved up now. And so today, he's moving up <laughs> in the world. What, what's that song, Moving On Up? Moving On moving Up. Moving On Up. Well, he's with us today, and we're certainly glad to have Pastor, wonderful friend, Dr. Dr. Reverend Ken Smith with us today. <laughs> Hello, to my friend. Yeah. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. That's great. We're Busy. certainly delighted to have you with us and appreciate you joining us. So how's life been? Tell us what's been happening. I know you just came off a wonderful uh, getaway to Alaska. Yes, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Alaska. If you've never been, you it. need to go. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about it. What's going on in your life? Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your family. Of course, I know most of the folks may know this. They may not know it, uh, but you're the father of the uh, ever so popular Logan Smith, <laughs> and you pastor a church. I mean, the list goes on and on. What do you not do? Maybe that's a better question. That, that would be a, a, a much Simpler. shorter <laughs> list. <laughs> I can promise you that. We can relate. Trust me. So tell us about your family. Well, uh, like you said, we, Logan's been uh, traveling the scene since he was 10 years old. He's 20 years old now. Wow, it's hard to believe. Growing up. Yeah. I'm getting and old. And he's your baby, right? Uh, 
No, no, he's no actually Landon's the baby. One. Yeah. Landon's the baby. Uh, he's 19. He'll be getting married in October. Landon so plays for Jeff and Jeff Cherry and Easter. Easter. And Mary and Mary and their daughter. Morgan. Morgan Easter. And coming up in October. October 25th. How about that? Rolling around in a hurry. And then uh, your oldest, Jordan. Oldest Jordan is, um, we're expecting our second grandchild. Look at that face. And you Jordan's the favorite, up? obviously. And believe it or not, a girl. A girl. Oh, my goodness. A, girl. a little boy We've had and a little girl. All boys. It's all over now. All boys. That's why. So that, I can guarantee you that little girl's going to be spoiled right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were actually uh, in Alaska. I had found this little this little lumberjack bear in a gift shop, and uh, said, "I'm going to get this for Carter. Take it back to Carter, which is right. our grandson, of course." And right next to it, uh, there was this little kind of pinkish-looking elephant <laughs> type thing. I said, "Oh, we got to get this. Oh, She's not here yet, that. but <laughs> she's on her way. Yeah, Already right. on her she's way. way. Now, when is uh, her due date? November the fourteenth. November. Hoping for November the ninth. Oh, that's that's that, my birthday. That's, that's your, your birthday. birthday. <laughs> well, that'd be all right too. <laughs> It'd be perfectly fine. And with then yeah. uh, your beautiful <clears throat> wife. Tell yes. us how long you've been married. Betsy's been married. Be twenty-seven years wow. in September. How about that? Now, uh, now, how long have you been pastor? I know you passed since 2006. 2006. At so 11 years and just come. Tell us your church. Community Church of Praise. In we're Stockbridge. We're actually between Stockbridge and Conyers. Yeah. So we've been there before. Yeah, you have a great church. Great church. Mm -hmm. God is blessing there, and uh, I hear great reports. It's been a, it's been a while since we've been, uh, of course, because of our schedule and, and your schedule, but. Uh, the Lord's blessing from the reports that we're hearing. Oh, yeah. Just and had a great revival. That's Just great. ended that's a great awesome. revival. And yeah, tell us a little bit about your revival. I know uh, you were telling me a few minutes ago about some reports you were getting in. Exactly. And, uh, and, you know, a lot, a lot of people today, uh, we were discussing this as well, seems like revival <coughs> is, is moving out. You know, that uh, uh, series of meetings, if you will. Uh, but the revival fires, man, they're still burning. Still burning. burning. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. burning strong. Yeah. Uh, those that are hungry. Yes. And those that want to experience revival, God is so ready to pour it out. I believe that. And just like he says, you know, in his word, in the last days, he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Yes, he will. You know, a lot of people, they try to denominate everything, but mm -hmm. God's ready to, yes. to feed anybody that's hungry. Absolutely. It doesn't matter as far as denomination right. goes. And, and, you know, and the, the thing about that is, as we said, I, I, I'm not that old, <laughs> but I do remember... But he's getting older every day. Uh, no. I do remember to some degree when I was a smaller child of the day when, you know, churches would come together for revival. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived in a very small community. And when the Baptist was having revival, the Methodists would dismiss and go to the Baptist exactly. church. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, you know, they would come together uh, in revival. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't see that today. No. And, and no. the sad thing is we don't even see... <clears throat> The church supporting its own revival. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. That's and exactly right. How sad that is. Uh, I remember, just like you said, growing up, our church, we had a, a church bus, and uh, <laughs> there would be churches around, you know, that would have yes. revival, especially if you knew the pastor Yes, that yeah. was there. And we would load up that church bus and, and take off, mm -hmm. you know, and support their revival, and they would do the same thing when I we can, had one. I can vouch for that. I'll never forget. <clears throat> we were in, uh, our church was going over to a, a revival service, and uh, at that time we we didn't have a lot of money in our church we were just an old country church but we bought an old bluebird school bus oh, that's my. what we had yeah we had an old bluebird school bus and we turned that into our church bus mm -hmm. and that's uh, awesome. yeah and, and and i'll never forget one time we were out in that thing and the brakes went bad in it and uh, we were using the emergency brake for brakes and praying on our way there. <laughs> but what I remember one night is coming out of a revival, uh, the brethren who was supposed to drive was so in the spirit that they had to literally tote him into the church yes. bus. When he got home, his wife said he was up nearly all night uh, praising the Lord and worshiping right. the Lord and speaking in other Nothing tongues. Any I'm telling you, and we just don't see that move of God no, like we, we don't. used to. No, we don't. Why do you think that is? Like I said, it's the hunger yeah. mm -hmm. that, that people once had that now you just really don't see anymore. Yeah. Uh, we live such a fast-paced life. Sure. We're always busy. We all. Everybody is always mm -hmm. busy. And, so and like I told our people a little while back, I said, you know, it's amazing to me at the commitment that we have to sports, yeah. commitment that we have to our jobs, 
And but what we need to realize is that if it wasn't for God, absolutely, we wouldn't even have the job. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have the physical ability to be able to play those sports. So true. Uh, you know, parents say our kids are so busy. Well, you ought to be in church thanking God for your kids. Absolutely. Amen. Because He blessed you with them. Mm -hmm. So true. And so that, that you just don't have that anymore, like so true. like it once was. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, but. I I can remember them laying under the pews. Oh yeah, you know with the power of God be so strong. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, and and honestly, you know, uh, I I think that's where I see a lot of things in our society today. The reason for a lot of the issues that we have today, if I we agree, if we totally. just want to get down to the nitty gritty here and be honest, I think a lot of the problems we have today is because man is not seeking after God like that's this. That's right. Year. That's right, and uh, that's the very problem with homes. Yes. The homes that are being broken uh, yes. uh, into pieces and then in the school system. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they talk about, uh, you know, when I, when I came along, it hadn't been that long. I'm like you. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, no, I'm no, not no. old. Uh, not it's been all. a couple days ago. <laughs> but uh, when I was in school, you didn't, you didn't have anything like it is now. Yeah. Sure. You had prayer around the flagpole. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You were not told you couldn't have prayer around mm -hmm. the flagpole. True. You had fellowship of Christian athletes that True. was allowed to meet, uh, you know, right there in the building where now you have so much that that uh, you can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. But then when you have the problems in the school, it's all because, to be honest with you, it starts at home. Yes, it does Absolutely. start. You know, they say it starts, it's, it's, it's in the school or it's because of the church, but no, it starts at home. No doubt about that. Because God created and established the family before the church ever existed. Mm -hmm. Yes, so true. And so when the, when the family is, is, is not where it needs to be, then it just travels right mm -hmm. on down to the kids. That's so true. And what so, a great so word. so important. To, what a great word. Started sure with the family. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, reason yeah. it says, you know, train up a child in the way he should go. When yeah. he's old, he'll not depart from it. Correct. That doesn't mean they, they may not stray. That's true. Uh, That's every true. one of us at some time or another right. has strayed. Certainly. But you always have that instilled in your heart and yes. your spirit that uh, where you came from, what God has done for you, and, and you never forget that. So true. So true. That's for sure. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful <clears throat> that we have this privilege to be a Christian? Exactly. You know, I mean, and I think often of what people are missing in life mm. without Christ. I don't know how people make it. I, I don't either. I, I don't know how they get by without the Lord Jesus right. Christ in their life. You know, every day that we wake up, and, and honest and truthfully, I, I was thinking of this the other day, even a non-believer, someone who's not a Christian, even has the Lord on their side. Yeah. Because even the Lord wakes them up. Exactly. Every day. Every day. Gives them the breath that they breathe. Even those who don't believe in Christ. Mm -hmm are still awakened every day That's right. by God and given that breath to live. That's exactly right. And, uh, boy, I'm, I'm thankful so for So much that. to be thankful for and so much to praise Him for. Yeah, that's so it's like the song you just sang. It's yes. not so hard to praise It's him. not hard. When you just think <laughs> yeah. about it. You know? yeah. Think about what He's done and where He's brought you from. You know, I, I told in service a couple weeks ago, uh, we were just having a wonderful service and people were all down in, in the altar and, and worshiping. And I said, if you came in here this morning, maybe you've had a rough week, bad week, bad month, whatever it sure. might be, and you just don't feel that, that praise, you know, bubbling up inside of you, think of what he's done for you yes. before this moment. Yes. I said, you could start now and go through eternity and never Absolutely. be able to praise him enough just Absolutely. for that. Amen, Amen, Amen to that. So it's not so hard to praise It's you. not hard to <clears throat> praise you. Oh, very quickly, I want you to, uh, two things. Uh, we don't have much time left today, uh, but uh, I want you to tell me, uh, do you have a favorite Bible verse? What, what's your favorite scripture? I know that's hard as a pastor, but <laughs> what's something that you'd lean on a little more than any other scriptures? Well, I love Jeremiah 29. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 29 and 11. That yes. I know the thoughts Yes. that I have for you mm -hmm. yes. and about you. And when I think of how God thinks about me, mm -hmm. you know, when there's millions upon millions of people on the face of this earth and how that he knows exactly where I am, mm -hmm. when I'm there, what I'm going through, but yet he can, out of all the millions of people, he can center me out so true. Mm -hmm. at any time. The and apple of his eye. Exactly. And, and the more I think about that, then I realize how special I am to him. Wow. Amen. Amen. Because, he, you know, he's special to me yes, by all is. means. Yes, But yet is. when I think of a God of this universe that created it, holds it in the very palm of his hand, but yet he can center me out. Yes. Yep. You know, I tell my teenagers at church, <clears throat> 
we sometimes think that maybe some things that happen in our life are accident or just, you know, maybe even salvation plan. God created the earth and then he went, oh no, I've got to create a plan for them to be saved. That's not true. God planned every right. single thing so out true. from the very, before there was a exactly. universe, there was a plan for every person that came here. And that's amazing to so think true. about. Totally. So true. Absolutely. And for those of you watching today, I want you to know you're the apple of his eye yes, too. Yes, you are. And he has a plan for your life. Whatever you're facing today, whatever struggles that you're going through, whatever may be upon you, the discouragement, uh, the fear, the heartache, the heartbreaks, whatever it may be today, know that God does have a plan for you yes, in your is. life. And wherever you've been, wherever you've come from, God loves you and he died on the cross for yes. you today. My friend, Pastor Ken, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure been great. to have you. Now, very quickly, uh, <clears throat> you've got, you got anything going on at your church? Tell us your service times, uh, where you're located one more time before we go. Right off uh, 138 between Stockbridge and Conyers on Union Church Road, Southwest. Yes. And our service time, Sunday morning, 1030, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, September the 8th on Friday night, 7 o'clock. Karen Peck and New River will be there for a great awesome. singing. Awesome. going to be great. So we're looking for a wonderful time. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. God's good. Pray blessings upon you. Thanks yeah. for being with Thank us. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Josh and Ashley Show. We hope you've enjoyed the program today. Listen, I want to take just a moment here very quickly before we move on. And uh, maybe you're watching us today, and, and uh, maybe you're one of those that we've been talking to. And uh, maybe the Lord's been dealing with you, speaking to your heart. And uh, maybe you're one of those who's uh, been struggling. And uh, can I just be honest with you? God's been good to you, and I don't want you to forget that. And I also want you to be remindful today that He loves you, and He cares for you, and you are the apple of his eye. Can we pray over these people today Absolutely. before we move on? And uh, would you pray blessings upon them? Maybe somebody's watching who don't know Jesus. Absolutely. Let's pray over them. Can we do that? Lord, thank you so much, God, for yes, just all the people who have watched the show today. God, I ask, Lord, that you would put a special touch on all of their lives. Yes. God, I pray that you would reach down. God, that you would touch each one that's brokenhearted. God, that you would touch each situation that needs to be mended. God, that you would fix what is broken. You would put back together, God, what has been torn apart. Yes. God, I ask you, Lord, that you would just give them a peace. Lord, I pray that you would just let them feel your arms around you, God. We know that you've been so good to us, and we thank you so much for all yes. of your many blessings, thank Lord. You, even Jesus. when things look bad, Lord, we know even on a bad day, it's still good because you're in our life. Thank you so much for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching the Josh and Ashley Show. We want to hear from you. Write to us today. Visit us online, www. Josh and Ashley Franks .com. So come visit us online. Let us know that you've enjoyed the show today. Listen, if the Lord's touched you, we want to know about it. Write to us, call us, email us. Just find a way to get in touch with us. Facebook, you can find us mm -hmm. there on that World Wide Web in all different ways. Come see us when you can, all right? And we want to hear your stories. We want to hear how God's touched you, how he's blessed you, how he's been there for you. Give us your testimony. Share with us your praise reports. That's what this song right here does that we're going to sing before we leave you today. It just tells a story of how the Lord changed the heart and the life of a man who'd went down the wrong path. But I'm telling you, when you get on the right path with Jesus, he does bring a fire on That's the right. inside, a desire, a love that you've never had before. We love you. God bless you is our prayer. And we pray that we'll see you again really, really soon. Let's sing before we leave today. All right. God bless you. We appreciate you watching. Was the life of the party in his little town? His name meant trouble for miles around. He knew where to find him when the sun sang low. He'd be down at the tavern where the good times did roll. He'd be the first one to get there. One to leave while he was that sin and drinking, you best let him be before the night ended. Keep me down on his knees, the first one to get there, the 
last one to leave. Listen. One day the life of the party promised his wife he'd go to church with her for just this one time. <laughs> but while the preacher was preaching, he couldn't stay in his seat. So he ran to an altar where he cried, Lord, save me. Now on Sundays and Wednesdays And at times in between While folks know it, they can find him down Where the church meets He'll be dancing and shouting But just let him heal me He's the first one to get there He'll be the last one to leave For he's the first one to get there At the altar, the, the Lord, Lord set him free. Lord, he found forgiveness down on his knees. The first one to get there, the last one to leave. Lord, he found forgiveness down on his knees. Yes, he did. The first one to get there, the last one. One. 